the final encounter I was able to uh, witness here at JPL with my uh, youngest son. And we watched with fascination as the pictures of Neptune unfolded. Suddenly, uh, things that no one had imagined were there. Here was a planet that was vibrant with life. It had its own great spot, a dark spot in this case, white clouds floating in its atmosphere. And these things unfolded before our very eyes. And what a wonderful surprise. Uh, Neptune, for me, was a great surprise. There was something strange and eerie about Neptune because here, the last planet, you know, the, the, the sentinel at the outer edge of our solar system looks like Earth with its beautiful deep blue color and its white clouds floating in the atmosphere. We were back with a really exciting planet again at Neptune. There were fast-moving clouds, clouds that moved in different directions, some of them almost at sonic speeds. The complexity of the planet's atmosphere was far beyond our expectations. Neptune turned out to have the strongest winds of all. Here in the furthest extremes of the solar system, where the sun barely penetrates, the last giant defied all expectations. You might expect that the further you got from the sun, where there was less energy to drive the winds, the winds would be slower. The winds on Jupiter are already hundreds of miles per hour. It turned out, rather than seeing slower winds, we found faster winds. We found winds over 1,000 miles per hour at Neptune. We now understand why that's the case, and that is, if you have enough energy, it creates a lot of turbulence, and that slows the wind down. At Neptune, there was a, so little energy that the wind basically got started and would just go and go and go. Neptune's atmosphere was much more dynamic than Uranus, but it was made of the same gases and ices. The last two giants were very different from their more massive cousins. Uranus and Neptune are not gas giants, but ice giants. 